Welcome everybody to the Dynasty TCG rulebook tutorial online presented by myself, Inji Chung, the creator of the game. Hope you guys enjoy and are ready to start playing. Now, the aim of the game. The aim of the game is very, very simple and it's to get your opposing commander's health, so your opponent, um, from 50 to 0. Although there are some conditions that we have put onto just in case you know you know how games go some people reach zero at the same time so that's why we've got a condition there we also have another special condition where if we read it if your opponent cannot draw cards from their deck but have health and have cards in play we will allow the opponent with zero cards in deck to keep on fighting as a homage to fighting till the end until there's no one left standing only one left standing and then obviously if both players have no cards on the field or they can't play the person with the lowest health then loses that so setting up the game um how do we actually play the game get ready for the game um the main deck is consisted of 50 to 60 cards this is your army this is you know the order cards the unit cards the environment cards everything you will be using during the game to conquer your opponents um we also do have a side deck which is not a part of the the main battlefield sort of gameplay itself it's on the side it's exterior to the game and it consists of 0 to 15 cards where you might want to swap into between matches uh, you also got to have enough space for you and your opponent. We our play mats are 50 by 44 centimeters, so that's the general space that we use for our play mats. So if you double that, then you have your overall gaming space for you and your opponents. Uh, something to keep track of damage. This is definitely useful because there there's quite a bit of number tracking just because of the way we have implemented damage taking and receiving and sort of creating that environment for you to take damage apply damage heal damage because we want each character each unit to feel like you know it's not just i overwhelm you it's you fight the proper fight duels that you have you know you lose health and that lose loss health carries through so recommend having dice dice is always a good option because you can put it on either side of the card to allow you to have your attack and your defense uh, pen paper also a very good method just to keep track of your overall health but also you know resources if you can't do the mental arithmetic to keep it going there but yeah dice pen paper always a very good option unless you're very good at maths then you can just keep everything up in the noggin now once you've set up got yourself ready we have to have a look at the game map because this is where all the good stuff's going to happen where you do the fighting where you get where you play the game and the map itself as you can see there's order zones retreat zones trade center discard pile deck and then the unit zones the unit zone itself is the battlefield this is where your troops go onto the field and fight the bloody fight and have a good battle on your behalf and we separated it into rows and lanes just so we can make coordination a little bit easier so you know you can actually say in the zone that you're going into because movement is such an important part of the way we do things in dynasty so as you can see top to bottom is row a b c and then from left to right we have lanes lane one two three four five very easy there just like a chessboard so if we were to place a card a unit card right in dead center of the battlefield it would be b3 so if you say i'm going to place this card on b3 your opponent knows okay they're going right there and if you say i want to target 5a then you would know where to target so that's how we've organized it there to make it slightly easier and to understand and actually to play itself um the order zones this is where you place your order cards to play them and then they they remain in the order zone but the effect is normally a one and done so it automatically applies and then once it's finished the effect is gone 
unit zones we've explained that's where you play your units and that's where your champions go where your battle champions go the people that will be doing the fighting trade center this is where you do the trading we can explain more in the mechanics section but that's where all the trading takes place the retreat zone this is where your troops get a little bit, you know, they're a little bit weak and you want to retreat them, bring them back, bring them back into the hand, send them to the retreat zone. More to be explained later in mechanics. Discard pile, this is for your units, all, all non-order cards that have been used, destroyed, anything of the search discarded goes into the discard pile. Uh, and then we have the deck zone, this is where you place your deck. I think that's quite self-explanatory. But yeah, that's where you place your deck, um, obviously face down. So the four different types of cards that are actually available for you to play with are unit cards, order cards, environment cards, and item cards. And I will be explaining more in the next slide. So in unit cards, we have four different um, classifications. So you have your normal units, champion units, level up champions and then battle champions i will be explaining each one as we go through the different slides just to make it easier to break down but as we can see on this diagram right here um if we go through step by step here one two seven so in the top left corner we have the resource cost so this is how much you have to actually pay to play the card so each turn you, know, you get your 10 resources and you have to pay to actually be able to play the card so the top number two where the type is that is the type of card that it is so at the moment we're using the chinese characters but in the future we're going to have icons to make it easier so on card text you can easily distinguish between what is what type of card it is number three is the name of course the name of the card you need to know who you're playing with what card is going into your deck number four is the attack so that's what that's what you use to do your damage number five is card description so in that little space there subject to change everything is subject to change but the core fundamentals will not uh, but the card description so any effects or any sort of flavor text it's going to be put into that number six is the health so that's how much health that your card has your unit has to take damage from your opposing enemies attacks and then in the seven spot that is the range so that's the range of the card to see how far they can actually attack on the field so yeah we're gonna be moving on now i forgot i had this slide but um i've already explained it. this is the last one we'll just move on to the next one as well so uh normal unit cards this is a normal unit card there is nothing special to it it's got all the core aspects of the card itself it's nothing too special it's something that it's important for you to have normal unit cards in your deck because you're only limited in your deck to four different champion cards so the rest you have to use these normal cards to help you know, build up your army and create strength the differentiation between um, normal cards and the base champions is that the base champion in the top right corner, as you can see, says base champion, although it's slightly pixelated there. Um, these are strong cards that can change the tide of battle. And essentially, the difference between you know winning or losing could be which champion did you choose and have you utilized the champion well enough? so base champions here um they don't level up they are purely a champion in their own right and they have no external level up effects as you can see in the card text area level up champions as you can see here um have a level up effect in the card text as well as it says base champion to signify that it is at the bottom of its evolution chain but the important thing is having the level up effect, which says destroy two enemies in the same turn, which will then allow it to level up into its battle champion form, which is a reward for the player who is able to pull off this special sort of uh, requirement mechanic, as it were.
which leads us on to the so battle champions what you can do with battle champions and these are the these are the big boys that you know you place on top of your level up champion after you level up but you can also play them from your hand so if you pay the requirement to play the card you can you know play the card but it comes at a cost and the cost is you don't get the effect so it only becomes a eight cost six eight um unit card and that's it there's nothing special to it but once it's destroyed goes into the discard pile if you were to level up the level up champion and it comes back onto the field you know on top of the level up champion you are actually able to get the effect the effect is only available when you level up if you don't you can play it and then you use it as a regular unit so unit class is the range of the unit itself so the sword and shield um, is for its name melee two blades is called the reach the helmet itself is meant to represent championship of a character so it doesn't actually affect the range um, the horse is mobile units and the bow and arrow is range units and that has to be explained further in later slides so order cards so you, we have two examples of a order card on the left here we have the enraged wukong so this is specific only to wukong if wukong was on the field you may activate this card and you get the effect because it's a champion special effect so it's in theory it's like the champion creating this power which you are unlocking through the card uh, on the right we have equipment finder which is a general order card which anyone can use without the requirement of having the champion on the field order cards are played into the order zone as previously explained and they remain in the order zone even after the effect has taken place their effects do activate immediately so the moment you place your card down or call out the card that you're playing the effect is activated and it's a one and done effect so once it's activated it's gone unless otherwise stated but that's how order cards work item cards item cards are played under the unit when you play it so you have your card here and then you place it under and the effect is placed onto the unit obviously we have the cost of the item card we also have the name and the effect so it's quite self-explanatory on how it works in terms of the layout itself um but essentially think about a character you give them a shield for example as long as they're holding onto the shield they have the powers of the shield you know they have the effects of the shield now when you're retreating um if you retreat and you would like to take the items back with the unit that you are retreating you have to obviously pay the cost as well to bring it back into the retreat zone if not then the shield will go into the discard pile and if you know if you're in battle and you're holding on to the shield and the unit is destroyed then both the unit card and the item card is sent into the discard pile and item cards can be targeted by other cards as long as the other cards are stating that an item card is to be targeted environment cards are something to change the environment of the battlefield they can be placed onto the field like units but they have different functionalities it's essentially to create roadblocks to create obstacles or just the name environment cards is representative of what they do it's change the environment so for example we have a ward here which is durability three what that means is it can take three damage before it's destroyed sent to the discard pile and then you know it's gone but what that does is you don't take any damage because it's a wall people have to get through the wall before they get to the units that it's protecting so that's how it changes the environment there are different types 
of environment cards to be produced and to be released. So all will have different effects and how differently they will affect the environment will be determinant on the card itself. When to play cards. So now we've seen every different type of card that we can actually have in the game itself. The important thing is when can we play the cards. So for order cards, you can play them on your turn and your opponent's turn. However, um, for all the other cards, you can only play them on your turn itself. So mechanics of the game. I've listed out um, all the key mechanics of the game that we will be discussing. So resource mechanics, card orders for orders and effects, retreating, leveling up, trade center, attacking mechanic, defending, unit movement, damage calculation, and attack range mechanic, which will all be discussed in the following slides. Uh, resource mechanics. Um, you begin each turn with 10 resources. That's the you know, beginning of the turn, you get 10 resources. That's your budget that you have to work with during each turn. And um, it does reset at your every draw phase, which is at the end of your attacking and defending phase. Um, meaning on your opponent's attacking phase, which is your defending phase, if you have resources left over, from your attacking phase you can actually play cards for example order cards you can play them on your opponent's turn and have a bit of a av defensive advantage in that sense um yeah while well, you still have as we can see in the second bullet point as you still have resources on your opponent's attacking phase you can play order cards and retreat yes retreating as well you may retreat onto as long as you have the resource cost um but yeah you on your opponent's turn that you can't from this point you can't move or declare attacks next point would be card order and effects um, so the turn order is you playing the card so it's based on action and reaction so if you play a card your opponent may react to the card itself and if the card does not have an effect which is essentially negating the effect of what you just played then your card would take place first and then your opponents and then if you count it again it would then be yours so it's just making the chain of reaction a lot easier as whoever played it first gets it first so retreating we briefly touched upon retreating where um as this is where you bring troops from the field back into your hand and um, so during your turn you may retreat as many times as you like because it's your turn and if you, as long as you have the resource cost to retreat them you can retreat them and then on your opponent's turn um, so their attacking phase and your defending phase you may only retreat once but again, subject to you paying the cost. And the mechanic of actually retreating is you pay the cost of the unit that you like to retreat, items and all, if you would like. And then once you pay that cost, you put it into your retreat zone two. And it stays in, re in retreat zone two until your next draw phase. The moment you draw that card on your draw phase, you move, remove it from retreat zone two into retreat zone one. And then on your next draw phase after that, you move it from retreat zone one back into your hand and it turns into a fresh card. No damage, anything that was on it gets removed, any effects, any special conditions removed and it goes into your hand and becomes a fresh card. Now, uh, one retreating, um, as I said before, if you want the items, pay the item cost as well. Um, and the retreat cost itself is a one-time payment that you do to get it into the retreat zone. The following payments is waiting. And I briefly touched upon leveling up earlier when explaining the level up champions. And uh, basically, just to further clarify, the stats of the card itself turns into the battle champions base stats. So if let's say your unit health your battle you know, your base champion health was a one 
and then you leveled it up. Um, it turns into the new battle champion with its full stats, so everything gets refreshed, whatever is on it. And items equipped to the main uh, level up champion gets passed on to the battle champion because it's the same entity. For the trade center, I will actually be following each point step by step on the slide just so it's a little more logical and I don't really skew away from um, the bullet points because this is uh, it's a it's not a difficult um, mechanic to um, sort of play itself but the getting the concept around the head is slightly technical so uh, we'll begin with the trade center is where you sell cars from your hand into the trade center to allow access to your discard pile and bring it back. Um, as a quick disclaimer, the purpose of the trade center is basically not to use it all the time. It's sort of a last minute scenario. This is your um, your final stand where you have a bunch of not so good cards in your hand, but you have a really, really good card in your, in your deck and you sacrifice those cards in your hand to bring back a strong card, e.g. a champion, and then you can play it onto the field as like, whoa, Wow, you just turn nothing into something, but like I said, it's not something that you want to keep on using because it's a very taxing mechanic, which is why it's such a final stand, if if you will. Um, now, uh, you may only sell cards from your hand, so it has to be in your hand. Cards that you put into the trade center has to be in your hand, nowhere else. And you can only buy from the trade center only on your turn. So if your opponent's got cards in their trade center, you cannot buy on your their turn. For example, the turn they put cards down. You can't do that. You can only do it on your turn to make things fair. Um, so to trade itself, um, we deposit cards. So depositing cards is putting cards down into your trade center and your deposit is the resource cost of those cards and the combined resource cost of the card has to be equal or greater than the cost of the card that you would like to put from the discard pile into the trade center so to repeat that again you deposit cards from your hand equal or greater resource card than the card that you would like from the discard pile to move into the trade center which would then allow you to buy it back so once you have deposited your cards and moved the card you would like back from the tr uh, discard pile into the trade center you then have the option to spend by paying the resource cost of the card that you just moved into the discard, uh, the trade center, sorry, from the discard pile to put it back into your hand. So, for example, if you put down three cards that have the total resource cost into the trade center, you move a seven cost card from your discard pile into the trade center. You can then pay seven resources. To put it back into your hand so that's how the, in simple terms the trade uh trading works there um the cards you have deposited are now available for, for purchase again for you and your opponent however um the turn that you deposit the cards you cannot buy it back so you can't place it down and buy it back, place it down, buy it back, place it down, buy it back. You can't do that. But your opponent, on their turn, they may buy it back. So it's a sacrifice you have to make to actually put down the cards because you risk your opponent buying it back away from you. Um, let's see. On the next point, um, yeah, your opponent can buy from you. And then the turn after, you can buy it back from yourself. So yeah, so that's how the trade center works. Essentially, it allows you to dip 
into the discard pile to actually access cards that you would not normally be able to access but at a very very heavy cost because using the example of our seven cost card that we bought back you've already spent seven to buy it back so you have to wait another turn to actually play it which is why this is such a oh i can survive for three more turns i think i can make one final stand sort of mechanic attacking mechanics um so this is actually how you do some damage this is how you attack as per attacking mechanics um basically uh we attack in lanes so you can only have one attack per lane slash per unit so um un unless you have cards that can attack multiple times per lane or and per unit um basically the attack itself you have your five lanes you can only conduct battle once per these lanes and any cards any units that are included in the lane for example united once they've um been in battle they can't be in battle again so they can't be part of another attack you can't use it to unite again or you can't use it as an individual killer as seen in point four there even if it was unsuccessful because it's been in battle so it's taxed now it's fatigued you can't actually put it in battle again um if there's an empty lane that you're attacking you can attack it does direct damage to your opponent because it's their fault for leaving the lane empty not looking after themselves um, if you attack a enemy unit by using a ranged or reach unit of yours, the defending unit has to have the same reach and the same range to actually be able to do damage back to yourself. For example, if you were standing three yards away and as a with a bow and arrow and someone was standing three yards away from you you could shoot that arrow but they wouldn't be able to hit you with a sword so you know you've got to have overlapping ranges to actually be down and be able to do damage itself um another point is you attack using melee or range you take damage or do damage on anyone because melee or mobile sorry because they are close combat fighters whereas range and reach is obviously more there is separation there to attack any supporting units you must have the range from your opponent's zone unit zone sorry to reach a successful attack so yeah um you have to have the range to be able to attack any further behind so if you if each card had a range appear when you put it on the board the targeted has to fit within that range and we'll explain that further with some diagrams later on so here is just some scenarios um so we'll start off with the left scenario here as you can see we have jinso on if you guys know try and say the coordinates i'll give a few seconds if you guys can figure out the coordinates but if not right now on our side of the field, we have a Jinso on lane one and row C. So C1 is attacking the opposing Jinso on row A, lane five, A5 against C1. So in this scenario, we have two empty zones separating those two, and they're both melee. In this scenario, you, they both attack each other it's an empty zone they both run towards each other and do damage and damage is obviously conducted after uh, but they don't change from their position they can just do damage like that in the middle section we see row a with lane three jinso on the opposing side as well as on our side as well but we also have a b3 jinso and what's going on there is jinso on the opposing field can only 
deal damage to the Jinso on row A because it doesn't have the range. And then ob obviously excess damage goes to us, not the secondary Jinso. On diagram three, um, they are our Jinsos on A and B3 are in a united formation. So if they're united, they may attack only the Jinso opposite on the field. So these are just some scenarios to explain some situations that some people have questioned before. Reinforcing. Reinforcing is the defensive strategy that you can have on your turn during your defending when your opponent's attacking you. So when your opponent's attacking you, um, what you do is rotate. So my hands are the cards. So this is the front line unit and this is a defending line unit. When this one is being attacked, you turn this one 90 degrees and then you place it on top. And that's defending. That's reinforcing, sorry. That's, well, it's defending and reinforcing. Alternating terminologies there. And when you reinforce it, what happens is the defending unit becomes a shield and actually takes on the damage that the original targeted unit would actually take. But you have to be supporting the targeted unit to actually perform a proper reinforcement. And what happens after the attack is that the unit will take the damage as a shield and then the excess will then go on to the original target that has just been reinforced. Now, when this happens, your opponent's unit doesn't actually take damage. It only does damage, it doesn't take retaliation damage from your reinforcing because you're doing a defensive maneuver. Whereas if you were to not reinforce, then it would take damage from battle. And then, yeah, the last point, if your reinforce survives, the, it takes the damage and then it goes back into its original position after the battle. So the health will be reduced. Reinforcing. So yeah, here's just a diagram of what reinforcing would actually look like. So after the battle, if the reinforcing Jinso survives, it would go back into its original position into B3 in the offensive position there. And then obviously if it's destroyed, it goes into discard pile and then the excess will be placed onto A3 Jinso. Movement. Um, so if you don't know already, the units that we have in the game can actually move, and they can move one position in any direction. So as you can see in the diagram, you have top, bottom, left, right, top, right, top, left, top, left, I mean bottom, left, bottom, right. So once per turn, you can move in any of these directions, as long as there's an empty space. If there's another unit in that space, then you cannot actually occupy that space. But you can move after battle, before battle, just do it once per turn, and only on your turn. You cannot move on your opponent's turn. So yeah, just a quick, quick simple explanation there. Damage calculation. Um, this is literally attack, take away your health. So no, I mean health, take away your attack. And then any excess goes onto your opponent's overall health. melee attack range so i mean attack range mechanic I've read it wrong um so we start with melee units uh which we explained earlier was the sword and shield they have a range of one zone so from where they are one ahead reach melee has the range of two zones so from where they are they should choose to attack directly in front or two in front Mobile units have the whole lane, so you can go from the back all the way to your opponent's back lane. So row C all the way to your opponent's row C. Uh, range units have a range of four in front. So if they're on the back line, the furthest that their range can actually hit. So if they're on C, 
the furthest that they can hit is your opponent's B line. So um, this just allows you to actually see where and who you can actually hit. And it's more useful when you have multiple troops on the field. Because, for example, you, when we have the empty space, you know those two can clash and the range isn't really required or necessary. Um, so yeah, so this is just an explanation of actually seeing it visually. So lane 1, melee. Lane 2, reach. Lane 3, mobile. Lane 4, range. And what I put here is when attacking the defending unit, only deals damage back if it surpasses, matches the range itself. The term surrounding also means every square around the unit. So top, bottom, left, right, every corner piece. So that's surrounded. So that's if there is area damage in the game and friendly fire as well. So you can understand where the position is. So here um, we're going to talk about the friendly fire, which we briefly explained in the previous slide. And friendly fire is basically Jinso on lane C you can actually deal damage to Jinso in lane B. I mean, not lane, I mean row, sorry. C to B because it's within that one square range. Don't know why you would do that, but you can do that. It's something that's available. But C Jinso cannot actually deal damage to A Jinso because she is out of range. Now, we get to more mechanical stuff. Deck building. Deck building is very important. And as we briefly explained earlier, it's 50 to 60 cards that are legal within the games because obviously some cards are illegal for example some of the older stuff that we produce until we have a standardization of every single card and the final final kickstarter that we'll be releasing hopefully in the back end of 2023 um, every card is subject to its own compartmentalized environment the uh the limit for each card itself so for example the ronin that we saw earlier you can only have three cards well, three copies of it per card that you have. Within each deck, you can only have a total of four champions. So only four champion cards can be played within your deck. So that's why it's so important to choose the champions correctly, because they have such strong effects. Decks are also limited to seven unit cards with the cost of seven or more resources. So champions are also part of this if they cost seven or more resources. So this means out of, for example, 50 cards, seven of the cards in the 50 cards will be seven resource cost higher unit cards. And then uh, the last point for competitive play, only legal cards. So that is um, the standardization. This is only concurrent for what cards we have now so we run tournaments there's only four certain compartmentalized cards that are uh unified together to actually work symbiotically whereas some cards are out of the curve of the environment which would actually break the game and since we are not at that final final standardized stage yet it's hard to actually get that done but in the final stage finale kickstarter when we have the standardization, every card will be legal, and every single one of the cards that are produced now until then will be samples and illegal as such. Order of play. So this is just explaining how the game will actually take place. Um, you start by saying hi to your opponent, of course, you know, you have to have an opponent to play. You shuffle and cut each other's decks. Um, of course, be careful when touching other people's cards, not your property. Um, after cutting, place the card decks face down in the proper deck zones. Have a way to determine first or second. Good way is playing rock, paper, scissors or flip a coin. 
and there we go let's follow this for your next campaign yeah so once you've won a match the loser of the match will then be able to choose if they would like to go first or second for the next one and then in the third game as well if it goes into game three the loser then chooses again and then the essentially the final step here is draw six cards with the starting player and then the, the games begin and then once you've drawn those cards you have the order steps which will actually be following here but yeah once you draw those six cards the game can officially begin which is where we lead on to the turn structure the turn structure itself um your turn begins you enter your draw phase after you've done your six so player one will not be able to do their draw phase because that's the disadvantage of being the first player but player two will have to do the draw phase and then you get seven cards in hand you enter your attacking phase which is not the phase that you attack in but it's the offensive phase that you are in where you are able to attack so you can do anything from moving cards playing cards retreating cards attacking anything that we previously discussed you that you can do on your turn this is your your turn your attacking phase and then once your attacking phase ends you know after you've done your battling after you've done your retreating everything that you need to do on your turn it moves on to your opponent's turn and this turns into your defending phase and their attacking phase because in this stage you will be defending and they will be attacking they will be on the offense and you'll be on the defense so your opponent will draw you're on your defending phase and then your opponent will obviously do the same thing that you just did and then once they've completed their attacking phase you then enter your draw phase and you get your resources replenished and you can start another round uh side note here there is no max hand size because our game is dependent on a structure where you have 10 resources per turn you have those 10 resources cool even if you have 50 cards you will not be able to play every single card because you will not have enough resources to actually play okay so this is essentially a log of how the game will take place to further expand on the previous um, slide that I just explained. So both players start by drawing six cards, have 10 resources and 50 health. Next stage, both players get the opportunity to utilize a mulligan where you play, for example, three cards back into the deck, shuffle it, and then draw three cards out again. This is called the mulligan. You can only do this once in the whole game, so in the match. If a player does the mulligan and the opponent does not, the player who doesn't have the mulligan will be able to draw an extra card because they haven't taken the advantage of doing the mulligan as it changes up percentages and stuff of drawing cards once that's established and both players are ready player one will play cards to the field but they can't draw or attack during this first turn because that would be too powerful player one will then conclude their attacking phase and enter their defensive phase which would indicate player two's attacking phase beginning which allows them to draw a card action phase is basically a term to say what you can do so play cards retreat cards attack in any order it's just a generalized term because we want to give you freedom in the way you play not set you by structure and then once you go into your defense the player two goes into their defensive phase player one thing and draws the card gets a replenishment of their 10 resources and plays off there uh yes key point uh players must shuffle the deck after searching a card 
as a general consensus throughout all the game there. And then obviously this turn structure itself is repeated until the winner is established through the rules that we established earlier. Alternate game modes, All Out War, Victory Royale and Scrimmage. All Out War, as we can see here, is you have 4v4, big army, you combine everyone. The health of the army is made up of 50 times the number of commanders, the number of players on one team and then another team. Commanders can play units on any turn. Uh, not any turn, sorry, any lane on any commander's field. So it's one big battlefield, one big battlefield, and the starting is 10 times... The, the starting resources is 10 times um, the number of players in the zones on both sides of the field. Um, let's go to the next point, which is friendly commanders may access friendly discard piles, trade centers. Yeah, so everything is available for everyone. Turn order is done by team by team. So it's team A versus team B. And whatever happens, everyone discusses, everyone strategizes within teams. So it's one big pseudo game, one pseudo team against one pseudo team and so it's two entities still but it's just bigger and everyone gets more stuff and more resources and now different things that happen so it's one big turn against one big turn there and then as i explained the resource pool is 10x the number of commanders and you just have to discuss it with your fellow commanders on how to do it and then to win it's to knock down 50x the number of commanders on your opponent's side down to zero. So 4 times 50 would be 200 health. You would have to reduce 200 health from your team to their team. And then you win. Victory Royale, it's literally the same as doing a 1v1. Difference being, instead of two players being able to draw an attack, the last player the campaign gets the draw and the first attack so it's not player one player one and player two have to sacrifice their draw and attack and then player three if we're talking about three on uh, one on one on one player three would get the first attack and then the whole turn order would be the same as everyone but here resource replenishment is the same standard but the resources is carried out all until the end commander so it'll be commander number three which then after it ticks round you allow the replenishment and the resource cost um yeah so it's just playing until one one left standing hence victory royale and then one full term in this mode is when you get your next draw phase which is after the very last commander that was before you scrimmage uh this will be coming soon I'll be doing a follow-up video on how to do this and it's basically opening packs and creating an army based on what you have available and then yeah this is the thanks for watching stage everyone thank you for watching the sort of explanation on how the rule book is um, actually you know meant to be read and sort of explaining it through me making things slightly more clearer filling out holes that you may have there is a video on how the game is actually played out as you can see on here there is a link i will put the link into the video description below so you can kind of check it out to see how the rough gameplay is this was done a while back as you can see in march 20th this year but I will also be hoping to do a gameplay video to show things more in depth in terms of the flow of the game because I know explaining is a lot more difficult than just sort of seeing it played itself. I recommend reading the full rule book because I am just explaining generalized concepts and filling in holes that people have asked and putting in explanations to further develop things just to make sense of a little bit but 
full information, you know, concrete black white information is on the rule book. So I do recommend you reading the full rule book before playing as well as watching this video so you have the best idea. And yeah, I just want to say thank you for staying watching this whole video. I hope this is useful to, you know, seeing how things are meant to work and how, you know, things are actually meant to be understood. Yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I don't want to take any more time. I know it's a bit of a lengthy video. So yeah, thanks for watching. Stay in touch. Any questions, contact Dynasty underscore TCG on Instagram. Send us an email, which you can find on our website, www.dynastytcg.com. And I will get back to you as soon as possible. And final note, Kickstarter, November 1st. Get ready. We're going to be producing you'll see the video you'll see the video but get ready have a look at our instagram and you know get ready to play the game and see you guys soon